When I first brought the wheel into my home, I immediately opened it and saw that the instructions were laid right on the top, which I promptly ignored like every other cisgendered male because we all do that. We open up a package, we look at the instructions and go, I'm not dumb, throw those away, fiddle with the equipment for an hour and then go, man, I really wish I remembered what garbage I threw the instructions in because I kind of, <laughs> I kind of need those now. Hello, you dirty potters. How are you today? In today's video, we're gonna be doing another wheel review. In our last wheel review video, we did a wheel from the Vivor company, and that ended up fairly good, actually. I was quite impressed with that wheel for the low cost that it was supplying us with. I call them economic pottery wheels because I think it's disrespectful to call them cheap pottery wheels, as everyone does not have the finances to buy a $1,000 professional pottery wheel, but these are far more viable for someone who wants to try out ceramic artwork or really just needs a machine to work on in place of saving up for another more professional wheel. In the last wheel review, we did the Vivor pottery wheel, and that one was quite good. The trouble with that wheel is that we had nothing to compare it to because that was the first wheel of that kind of era reviewed so I compared it to my pottery wheel which is quite old but now we can use Vivor as a base as we test the new Nanto pottery wheel of course as always I will be giving you timestamps in case you just want to skip around to the meat of the video and you don't want to hear anything else I know a lot of you are impatient which is crazy because ceramic artwork is like the most patient art form you could think of and you're just like gonna whatever you know what you know what you do you it's your money before we do anything i want to thank the nant pottery company for sponsoring this video they are the reason that we're doing this video today they sent me the wheel i said yes and they're also the reason why we are giving this wheel away all you have to do is like comment and subscribe and you will be good and set to go i will pick someone out of the comments and i need listen to me listen to me I need you to keep an eye on the comments and come back every once in a while when you see your notifications pop up because the last time I picked a winner and that person didn't contact me so I went to one of my patrons who support me on Patreon and look if you don't respond in like a week that's, that's what's gonna happen but that is how you'll be entered in the drawing for the Nant Pottery Wheel. Just make sure to do all the YouTube things, I'll pick someone out, and I'll send it to you free of charge. Secondly, the direct competition to the Nant Pottery Wheel is going to be the Vivor Wheel. So we now have a fair comparison to compare this wheel to the other more economic wheel. And thirdly, I've already talked to the company and I told them that I will be doing a honest review of this wheel if they wanted me to do the video at all. So just because someone sponsored the video doesn't mean I'm automatically gonna talk up and love on this wheel. I'm gonna be giving you an honest review, I'm gonna be giving you the goods and the bads of my experience with this pottery wheel that I've been working with for about three weeks now. Let's start off with a little bit of information about the Nant pottery wheel. I'm looking at the specs on the screen of it right now and it's like it comes with a foot pedal and I thought that was weird that they mentioned it came with a foot pedal but keep that in mind because that, that's something for later. The wheel is 9.8 inches around. It comes with a touchscreen, 12 piece pottery set of tools for sculpting and doing pottery. It comes with a sponge, it comes with a wire cutter, and it also comes with its own personal bat, which we will talk about and open on screen later. It usually comes in the color blue. It also comes in the color orange. I don't think that's relevant to the actual review itself. I just want you to notice there's a trend in the world, not even the pottery world, in the whole world of people buying blue things instead of anything else that's not blue. If it's not blue or purple, people don't want to buy it. And I don't, I don't know why that's relevant, but it's weird. Oh, my favorite color is blue. Oh, mine's purple. Oh, you're not special. It's like you and everyone else in the world. The Nant Pottery Wheel is sold by the Nant Fun Company, which is a store on Amazon, and they're the ones who contacted us for doing this wheel review today. It goes 320 rotations per minute, and it comes with an LCD touchscreen pad which I've never experienced in my entire life. It was very interesting to operate this thing. I found it extremely strange to operate at first, but after a while I could see some major benefits for having a touch screen as far as someone who doesn't exactly know how to figure out their wheel control. We will review that at a later time. I just wanted to note, it comes with a touch screen and that's awesome. Now much like the Vivor wheel, it is still a short wheel. It doesn't have the standard height and size that a more professional wheel would have somewhere in the $800 to $1,000 range. But they do note this on their shop. So you can clearly see there's a full grown adult with some type of stand or wooden stool that they're throwing on to reach his chest height so that he can actually throw. I found that very refreshing because other wheels don't let you know out the gate. Like, hey, it's a bit small. 
here's here's the dimensions on it here's a picture for the dimensions it even has another picture showing a child around the age of maybe five or six throwing some pottery as well and it's the perfect size for them so just like i said with the last vivor wheel review this would be a perfect setup for a child but hey if you want to spend a thousand dollars on someone to like something for a month and then never go back to it again I saw you dog. When I first brought the wheel into my home, I immediately opened it and saw that the instructions were laid right on the top, which I promptly ignored like every other cisgendered male because we all do that. I don't need these. I know how to work a wheel. <laughs> as soon as you open up the wheel, you're gonna find this little bundle of a sponge and all 12 pieces of those pottery tools that they said would come in the package right on top. Do take note though that four or five of them are really, really sharp sculpting metal stainless steel pottery tools, while the other like seven or eight of them are just plastic little tools that I don't know whether you would consider them quality or not, but they're not the last you forever stainless steel type of tools. Those are extremely sharp. I will say the high majority of potters don't need them that sharp. I think if a beginner opened this package of tools, they would be like, oh wow, thank you, I needed these tools. But if you asked any other experienced potter, they would say most of these are unnecessary for what you're gonna need. I just wanna let you know the standard pottery tool set that we get is usually not this sharp and not made of stainless steel stuff. We usually get like a cheese wire, a sponge, um, some type of rib, sometimes the metal rib, and that's the sharpest thing in the tool set and usually a wooden knife and that's the wooden knives are pretty good for what we're doing already this is a five set plus seven more things of tools that are really really sharp so i just want to leave that disclaimer there in case you're buying this for a child or you're super new to the craft granted they are really nice high quality tools for sculptors as we pull it out we see that it comes with the plug and a little extender just in case you want to put it around the corner from an outlet instead of directly on it one of my last wheel reviews i noted that i like to put my stuff around the corner so if my plug is over here i like to have it somewhere over there so that I'm not splashing dirt and water directly into a socket unless I have something to cover it with, and I did appreciate that. As we continue to open the package, I found a bat, a wheel bat, which is very surprising because they supplied you with a wheel bat. For those of you who do not know what a bat is, it is an extra piece of equipment that goes on top of your wheel and attaches to it, so when you throw, you don't have to take your piece directly off of the wheel, as for some people, that's quite difficult. You can just kind of jimmy it off and it comes off of its own little plateau. You put it wherever it goes and you don't have to struggle trying to get your pot off of the wheel whatsoever. It even came with two little bat pins. These bat pins usually go on the inside of two little circles in the wheel to fasten the bat onto the wheel itself, and that's what holds it together. I love the fact that they included a bat and pins. The one major thing that I didn't like about it is that most wheels, especially the more high caliber wheels, have a standard size of their bats and their bat pins. So all the bats and all the bat pins and all the holes inside their wheels that fit those bats and bat pins have a standard size. So no matter where you buy one, they're probably gonna fit unless you have a super different wheel. Turns out, this is a super different wheel. That means that if you wanna buy more bats or you wanna throw more than one piece at a time and you get very comfortable with the bat setting, that means you're gonna to have to buy more of these bats from this specific company in order to keep using this bat if you wanna keep using them and become very comfortable with them. I have a bunch of bats over here I will show you. And just an example to reiterate that because I feel like that might be a bit lost in translation. This right here fits on my wheel, okay? This, which is a different size, see, altogether, also fits on my wheel. These over here also fit on my wheel. They're made by a completely different company. And so does this, which is also made by a different company. These all fit on my wheel because they've gotten together and said, hey, all the wheels, let's standardize them. Let's make all the bat pins and the fasteners that go to the bats all the same size. So everyone who buys a bat anywhere in the world, no matter what shape or size, will have access to put them on their wheels. This company didn't do that. And because of the size difference of the wheel head itself, you can't just walk into any pottery shop or go online and have people send you bats and pins and assume they're going to fit like every other piece of equipment. You have to go directly to this company to buy the same equipment in order to fit their stuff. It's kind of like the Apple company. It was like, oh, you can only use our chargers. And every other cell phone in the world was like, you can use a USB-C or a Lightning C. We don't care. We just want everyone to fit so we get down on the clutter of e-waste, it's ruining our environment, and Apple's like, no, you have to use our stuff, money. As we start to take the wheel out of the package and plug it in, I find one thing that I love, the LCD touchscreen thing is fantastic. You plug it in, you push the power button, it works, no problem. It has a display that tells you how many RPMs you're going per minute. 
I love this. I love this so much. I love this for beginners especially because you start to get comfortable with the speed that you're going at as you start to throw. For example, my wheel pretty much doesn't stop. It goes on about low to normal and I just don't ever stop it. Except for when I'm centering, which I go a little bit faster. But as I'm throwing, as I'm pulling, as I'm forming, I do all that, I stop the way I take it off, but I know exactly the speed that I'm going. This quantifies a number to the speed that you're gonna be going, which is fantastic for beginners. It actually gives you a tangible number to the revolutions per minute that you're going for this wheel. The other thing that I love about this is that they have a button to switch the rotation of your wheel. The high majority of wheels are made for right-handed people because most people are right-handed. If you can ever find yourself a left-handed wheel and you are left-handed, this immediately opens up the market for left-handed people in the art and ceramic art world. And I love that type of inclusion, it's, it's fantastic. The Vivor wheel that we reviewed in the last video had this as well, so they're pretty much matching. No points taken away or given, but I will say this one has an LCD button to it and that's kind of cool. On top of that, they have a speed adjustment button also on the LCD touchscreen display. So you can go up or you can go down in revolutions per minute and you can see the number change as you push the buttons. I know that I'm digging really hard into the buttons, but I love that I pretty much have a, like a tablet on the, on the side of my wheel that controls stuff. On top of that, there's another button, the head adjustment button, which was labeled a bit weird. I don't know what head adjustment meant, to them, but when you push it, you can change in between foot control or you can change in between the speed control on the LCD touchscreen. This means you don't have to touch the foot pedal whatsoever. You can put it away if you want to and never touch it. You can set a certain speed and it'll keep spinning like that until you turn the wheel off. At which time you, you know, you throw your piece, you're done throwing your piece, you push the power button, you take it off, push power button, it goes right back to spinning the same speed you wanted it to spin. This is fantastic for people who want a constant turning wheel. Some people are not very comfortable with controlling a foot pedal with their foot, much like a car, or realistically, some people are just not built like that. They might have something wrong with parts of their bodies or their feet, or you never know what people have accessibility issues or problems with, right? So I think this is a really good for someone who might need that accessibility. Realistically, anything that opens up the market for users, whether they have any type of accessibility problems or not, is good for the ceramic art world, and I love that they did this. As we continue playing with the wheel, we find this splash pan. Again, the Vivor wheel had this splash pan, and I hated this splash pan, but for some reason, on this wheel, it's fantastic. The reason that I hate this specific type of splash pan, and if you're a real beginner in the ceramic art world, there's a bunch of different types of splash pans. There's the things that catch the flying water that comes off of your wheel as you're throwing. And there's one that I hate specifically, and this is that one. I hate it because it's usually made out of a cheap plastic that's hard to get on and off. Sometimes it cuts you. I've bought $1,000 wheels before and played with them before, and they have this, and I hate it so much. I get that it's a way to cut down on cost for wheels, but ooh, do I hate it. But surprisingly enough, this thing was really easy to get on and off. I don't know how they craft these things in comparison to other wheel manufacturers or splash pan manufacturers, but for some reason, this was a pleasure to get on and off. I've never had a positive experience with this type of splash pan before, except for this one by the Nant Fun Company. It was so pleasurable that I ended up taking it on and off like three or four times on camera, just to be like, oh, that's easy, nice. Okay, I know a lot of you right now are like, why is he so obsessed with the splash pan? I've dealt with like 20 of them in my life and I hate every single one of this model except for this one and I don't know how they did it, but the other companies need to take some notes because this was so easy to get on and off that I, I might be a little switcheroony. I'm sorry, I don't know why I said switcheroony. I think the suburbs are getting to me. I'm becoming Ned Flanders. As we continue working with the wheel, of course we gotta flip it upside down, look at the bottom, and one thing that I liked about this wheel at the bottom is that it had grips on its feet. A lot of wheels, just even my professional wheel to my left here, has just the, these little metal stilts, like a high school class, you know, those little feet at the bottom. That's what mine is tripoded on. These have actual rubber that create friction for them to hold onto the ground, and I like that. So I had no problem throwing with this thing. The Vivor wheel didn't really have this, so when I tried to center, the wheel would kind of move if I put too much force on it. And I'm kind of heavy, I weigh 230. This little wheel couldn't take my pressure. But the Nant Fun Company wheel was fine because it had these little black feet on it that ended up creating enough friction and hold for me to push the wheel around a little bit 
and end up centering my piece just fine. I had no problems with it. And as we look at the bottom of the wheel, we find that the entire mechanics of the bottom, motor, belt, and all is just exposed. This was not very pleasurable for me to see. Um, the majority of us ceramic artists work in a very dust, clay, and dirt filled area. And even if you don't, you will soon if you are a beginning ceramic artist. It is inevitable that you have dust and silica and dirt unless you deep clean every day and that's a lot of effort. I don't like the fact that a lot of the components are exposed because this will weigh heavily on the longevity of the wheel. Dust and dirt and silica and glaze and clay will get into those components whether you want them to or not. And especially because it's so short, unless you put it on something like a table, it's going to be relatively close to the ground. I did not like this at all. Uh, my wheel has an encasing at the bottom of it and a couple wires hanging out, but those wires, of course, are insulated because most wires need to be. This is completely exposed. You can see everything from the chip in the back of the LCD touchscreen. You can see everything all the way to the wheel spinning when you turn the wheel on. You can see the belt, which is probably gonna suffer damage. You can see the battery in the back. You can see the miniature motor. I don't think this is good at all. I think if I were to give one suggestion to this company, just cover that up and you would have a fantastic wheel for beginners. But at this rate, I think somebody would buy this wheel, get a good year out of it if they keep it clean in a good environment. And after that, it would probably die from the amount of dirt and crud that gets into just the mechanics and not like, look, the, chi the chips are exposed. Like you can actively see the chip of the LCD screen. <laughs> like, the, like what's in your phone, you can see it on the outside. And I don't like that. Just imagine if you were using your phone in your studio, your dust, silica, dirt filled studio. But instead of the casing on it, it was just exposed with wires out and everything. That's what this is. I don't like that at all. I will say it seems like they kind of tried to cap a lot of the wires off by putting these little protectors on them. Um, so they're kind of hanging out. They're not really attached to anything. They're needed, of course, but they're just capped for cleanliness sake. But that still does not bode well for the rest of the equipment at the bottom of the wheel of which is if you're on top and the wheels pointed down and the dirt is lower than that guess what two things are coming in contact one thing that this wheel has over the vivo wheel is that it's transparent as far as how tall it is the vivo wheel tried to work in these weird stilts to make it taller but it wasn't tall enough for a person to just sit down on a stool and work with but it also wasn't small enough for a person to put it on a table and work with without stressing out your shoulders this is right in the middle of that and i think it's a perfect height if you put it on a table or some type of little stool or some cinder blocks. Granted, I really don't like the fact that I have to buy an extra piece of equipment or a table or a stand or cinder blocks in order for equipment to work. I wanna buy something, I wanna take care of it, I wanna maintain it, and I want it to work for as long as I maintain it for a good amount of time, and that's quality of craft. But if I buy something and it basically has batteries not included and I have to go to the store to then buy those batteries, I don't want that. I would much rather get a higher piece of equipment that I could pay more for, that'll last a longer time, that I don't have to maintain as much, and I could just charge it like most things nowadays. I had so much trouble with the height of the Vivor wheel and it took so many points off of that wheel review that I enjoy that this wheel company didn't even go for it. They were like, it is what it is. We're not gonna spend an extra $100 trying to modify it to make it taller. And then they didn't even really make it taller. They just made it like an inch taller, which didn't help anything. But I'd much rather have that then the company try and fix a problem which they didn't fix and add extra cost to the wheel. The Vivor company tried to do that. The Nant Fund company was like, nope, just if you want to use it, just put it on the ground or put it on a table. We're not gonna we're not gonna try to make it funny shmoney, fangly schmangly. God, the suburbs are getting to me, man. As I started to throw with the wheel, you find that the wheel head itself is some type of aluminum or steel. They wouldn't give me the specs on which one it was, but it is a type of metal and it does have these weird grooves on it that I don't understand every company is getting on these low-end economic wheels. They must be buying from the same distributor because the high majority of wheels, much like my wheel, is very smooth, and I'll show you. My wheel is made of plastic and it's very old, but even my wheel does not have these weird grooves that the Vivor and the Nant Fund company seem to put on their wheel. It's supposed to be smooth with a couple of grooves in between. We have one per every inch to half inch, one here, here, here and here, but in between, there's no extra texture. I'm not quite sure why, but every economic wheel that I've tested thus far, it's been about two or three of them, has made these weird textures on their steel wheel heads. 
we don't use these. I feel like there's extra production being put into these wheels because I think that they think that our pottery grabs on better if they put these grooves in there as if it's suction texture or something. But we don't, we don't use these. Uh, and you just feel extra texture as you're throwing. And I also believe it's just personally irritating to me because I'm a very tactile and physical person as I work in a physical art field <laughs> where I have to care about the texture and the feel of everything that I do. So if you're that kind of person and you're a very kinetic or tactile learner, as is most people in this art form, you're gonna notice those when you're throwing a lot. You're gonna feel them on the blades of your hand, they're gonna scrape a little bit, and it's not gonna be as smooth of an experience as it would be without those textures on the wheel. And finally, we get to the point where we start throwing on the wheel. I must say that the experience of me throwing on this wheel was a great pleasure. For some reason, it felt way more consistent, way more smooth. Uh, the previous wheel that we had tested felt like it jittered a little bit sometimes if I pushed too much pressure. I tested two pounds, three pounds, four pounds, and seven pounds on this Nant Fun wheel, and it just went smoothly every single time. I don't know what it is about this wheel, but the experience on this wheel feels much more smooth than other wheels of its same class. On top of that, I did use the bat, even though I was like, I'm not, this is the only bat I have unless I'm gonna buy more directly from the company. And even the bat was great. I don't, the bat was the same quality as the other high quality bats that you would buy from another company, such as the ones I showed you earlier. Sometimes these companies try and get like cheap bats from somewhere, and it's not like they're hard to produce, but sometimes the bats end up a little funky and wobbly over time. This seems like it's made out of really good plastic, and if you look underneath, it'll have kind of this web pattern, and that web pattern keeps the stability over time. A lot of wheels, or wheel companies don't have this, they just have a flat disc and sometimes it warps over time. This is a quality bat, I'm not gonna lie to you. I love it. The problem still remains though, if you wanna use a bat with this wheel, you're gonna have to buy it specifically from this company because the other bats don't fit. All in all, this wheel was great, honestly. I like this wheel. The major problem I find with this wheel is that it has completely exposed components on the bottom, and I think that is a negative thing for the longevity of the wheel. I think if you bought this wheel, it wouldn't last as long as the Vivor wheel, because the Vivor wheel has covered components. But I do think that it's a much better experience than the Vivor wheel overall. And if you're willing to clean every single time you're done throwing instead of just leaving your station, or you're willing to mop a little bit or wipe it down with a wet rag, I think you'll have a great throwing experience. Leave the splash pan on, get a couple extra sponges, make sure you wipe it down after with some clean water, and this will last you a very long time. Otherwise, if you're honest with yourself and you're not a cleanly person, or you understand that you're not gonna be cleaning your studio every day to every two days, I think it would be best for you to get one that has the components that's covered on the bottom as you're just gonna end up getting dirt and mud and crud in these components and it's gonna die quicker than usual. At the end of this day, I give this wheel a 3.5 out of five stars. In comparison to the Vivor wheel, which got a three star review, I think this wheel is a better version of a more economic wheel, but the main gripe that I have with it is that it has exposed components and that weird wheel texture. If the company's listening right now, stop putting those on there. We don't use those. We don't use them, we don't need them. You're putting extra effort into nothing. If this wheel had covered components, it would probably get a four out of five, and that's only because I think this will quickly kill the wheel if you leave them open, especially in a ceramic artist or potter's environment. We are known for having dusty, dirty environments, and there's almost no way around it unless you have the most fantastic ventilated area ever and you're sweeping it and mopping and wiping down almost every day to every other day. And you're also a very clean thrower, which most beginner potters and children, if you're buying this for a child, are not any of those things. <laughs> They're not none of those things. Thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this review. I'm going to be leaving all the links to this wheel and the previous wheel review that I did underneath so you can see both videos. Remember to like and comment what you would like me to review next. Hopefully a company picks it up and we do another one of these and I will give you my honest review on that wheel as well. The link to this product is also down below and to the Nant Fun Pottery Shop on Amazon. And I would also like to give a huge shout out once again to the Nant Fun Company for allowing me to not only give away, but do this wheel review underneath the sponsored video. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Potters, for joining me today. And I will see you, Dirty Potters, next week.
For those of you who don't know or you're very new at pottery, a bat is a piece of equipment for the ceramic wheel that attaches to the head, which usually has two little spots into it where you can dig two little nuts in it 